Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to Zero Calvin. Today we are going to finish up uh, a scene I'm working on. I'm working on a 3D representation of this scene and I want to do some subtle animations in it. So this is an art piece by Salvador Dali called The Persistence of Memory. And it's probably one of his more well-known works. Um, you know, everybody knows the melty clock uh, artwork, right? So there's some weird stuff in here. You know, you got three melty clocks. <clears throat> You've got this bizarre towel creature thing. Um, you've got another, like a pocket closed pocket watch uh, with a bunch of ants on it. You got a fly chilling out over here. You got this board, painted board thing here for no good reason. Got a, a little mountain in the background, some water. Um, of course, you have the tree, this block here and a tree growing out of the block. So I have been over the last uh, two weekends, I guess, puttering around, been puttering around and recreating it. So this is what I have so far. And uh, so pretty much as you can see, all the elements are here. I have the weird white thing with its little golden tongue. I have the three melty clocks, the pocket watch, the ants, um, a fly, tree growing out of the block, blah, blah, blah. So, and oh, this uh, plank here in the background, water, cliff. Um, you can see if I take the depth of field off. <clears throat> Not much to it, right? But I think it looks better with the depth of field on. So what I want to do is animate this. I'm actually going to enter this into a contest. Um, where I think it's, I think the theme is epic timepieces. And hey, what's more epic than melty clocks, right? So <clears throat> these clocks actually function. And if you want to know more about how they're created, um, I'll leave a link in the description and show you how I modeled these in Fusion 360 and did the melty effect in Blender and did the clock face that actually functions in my video editing software which is a power director. So with that said, I want to move on and do my subtle animations to this scene. I think I have to double check. I think it's only going to be a 10 second thing, but I might make two versions of it. The one I entered and, uh, you know, one just for my channel and for myself. So the one for my channel and for myself might be longer, 20, 30 seconds, but I just want to do a subtle animation with a subtle ca camera movement, just changing the perspective of the scene a little bit, maybe orbiting around this point here, this clock, um, something like that. <clears throat> so that camera animates slightly, which is easy. Um, the I'm going to move the ants a little bit, just slightly, and maybe have the fly jitter around a little bit. So nothing much there. Of course, I already have the clock faces that will will function. Um, so that's something else. So the only thing left, I think that I want to do, um, that I need to set up for is I want this cl clock here to kind of flap in the breeze a little bit. I want it to act like there's a little bit of a breeze and the structure is too complex for me to, um, apply soft cloth physics to, and then use wind on it. I, I really, that's just more of a nightmare than I'd really want to uh, explore. So what I'm going to do is just create a animated morph for this. So I figured I'd make a little video here um, just showing you how to create animated morphs in iClone 8, which is really the same, I think, as iClone 7. Um, so here's what we're going to do. In the scene, We're going to click on the clock. I actually have it parented to the tree. So, um, so I'm going to click on the clock and then we're going to go to the animation tab here and we have a morph creator is what we want to use. So we click on that guy and it's a sort of a separate but linked program, which will help us create the morph. Okay. So here's our clock. That's good. 
we want to export it out. Export OBJ, select it. Okay, so we've exported it. Now we're gonna bounce over to Blender and import it in. Import OP, OBJ. We're gonna bounce over to my morphs. And there it is, but before we Im import it, there's some things we got to um, do. So I have a preset for this. We need to keep vertex order. So basically what that does is we were over here. It has this one selected with polygroups selected. That's going to keep our, our vertex order um, when we import. And that's Im very important for us because um, the vertex order, the, the you know, each, the, the, this is of course a, a mesh, right? And each of the points are vertices and they're all numbered inside um, the OBJ. They all have a separate number. And morphs are created by giving, um, you know, direction in 3D to each of those numbered vertices. If those numbers change, then the morph is going to change the wrong vertices later on. So we need to keep those numbers the same. So let's <clears throat> so let's bring that in. Okay, that looks respectable. Um, so we just want to make it swing a little bit. Uh, I'm just going to do that with simple proportional editing. So I click Tab to edit. Uh, Alt A to not select everything. I'm going to click on this guy, which is X-ray. That's just gonna mean like when I select something, it'll select the back of it too. Because if we don't have that, it's only gonna do one face, right? So we're gonna do X-ray. And I'm just gonna select the bottom bit here. I'm gonna turn on proportional editing. Okay, so if I press G, we can move this around. As I scroll with my wheel, more and more of the mesh is included in the effect, right? And we can do it, we can scroll on the fly here. So I'm gonna hit escape. So I want to do something like that. I wanna do G. I think I only wanna do it along the Y I want to lock it to Y because I don't want to accidentally stretch it. Maybe I do. Um, okay, I'm going to hit G and just be careful here. G. Just scooch it over a little bit. I think we want to exaggerate it though. When we actually animate it, we don't have to use the full motion at 100%, but it's, so it's always good to create morphs a little more exaggerated than you probably need, just in case you do need them. Um, so we'll call this, we, we basically created the morph now. We created one morph, so let's export it out. File, export, Wavefront OBJ. And again, I have a preset to keep vertex order. So it has selected only OBJ objects and um, keep vertex order checked is an important thing. So we're going to call this Dolly Clock Blow 1. Save it, and let's just see if it actually imports in. So I'm gonna click this guy and then bring it in. Okay. Oh, that's right, there's two bodies. This mesh is actually two mesh, uh, multiple meshes. So there's three bodies that come in. Um, 
that's fine because there's this body, this body, and this thing. But the, so I'll have to move them in tandem when we animate, which is fine. But at any rate, it looks like this does function, which is cool. All right, that's cool. So let's just give it some subtle motion, you know, while it's blowing. I think that'll work just fine. Okay, so let's create one more going in the other direction now. So I'm actually gonna do Control Z here a couple times. Move that back to that. Now I'm gonna go here and do the same thing, G, and I'm gonna slide it this way. And I may do a rotate and just rotate it a little bit too. Oops. All right, something like that maybe. Going to add one below two. Okay. So now we got below two. Let's just flip it around like we had it before. So we got below one going that way, below two going that way. Awesome works for all the other bits too. Awesome, awesome. So that's it, that's all we gotta do. Now we gotta send this back into iClone. So we wanna make sure our clock is still selected. And we're just going to go to update morph to iClone. Um, this sends and replaces this whole object and replaces it with whatever is selected. This will just update the morphs for the object. And that's really all we would need to do. It's a less heavy handed thing. So we've just done that. And so now if we look in morph animator, here's our morphs, which is sweet. So that is that. So now in morph animator, we will be able to have this thing flap and blow in the breeze. So now we could try to animate this clock. I want to have it flap blow in the breeze. The breeze, I think, is mainly going to come from this direction, blowing this way. So I think that's morph two. We may have it, you know, obviously when it stops blowing, it may have to come back and swing this way a little bit between gusts. So let's just let's just play around and see what, what's what. Um, first of all, I just want to twiddle each of these as just an easy way of me uh, setting the keyframe for all of them. All right, let's do roughly 60. I can always change the Dorish where these are at. We'll go to frame 60, which is a second later. <clears throat> we'll do we'll do a light a light blow then we may have a shorter little gust and then it'll flap back the other way and then go back limp again maybe sounds good 46 Let's just have it go back a little bit at 75. All 
And then by 120, we want a stronger gust. All right, let's just see what that looks like. All right, so that doesn't look very natural. If we go down in the timeline for the clock, you'll see my keyframes, or these are actually the markers for the keyframes. Um, we don't actually see the keyframes because we have to turn on the morph track. So if we do that, Now, you see that there is a morph track and we see the various keyframes for each of those. Um, we don't really have to mess with those all singularly though, because we can just use the, we can move all of them at once using the overall um, keyframe markers here. It's just so much easier. So we can make this all a lot shorter. You get the point. So I'll have to mess around with it to make it look natural. I may have to change the... Um, eh. I think what... What's weird here is if I hold on control, I can make a copy of this. What's weird is that it instantly changes direction. It's not holding. That's what I want to see it do is hold when it's up for a duration. So that's, that'll look better. Okay. But anyway, that's what I'm doing with this. Um, you get the point. I'm going to continue and you'll, if this is out, the final one is out, the final version is out. So I'll post a link to it in the description and you can, if you haven't seen it already, you can watch that. So anyway, guys, I'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching. Cheers.